The men who played vital roles for George Floyd's family throughout the Derek Chauvin trial, including the historic $27 million settlement with the city of Minneapolis, our attorneys Benjamin Crump and Antonio Ramanucci, and they are joining us live this morning from Minneapolis. Thank you, fellas, for being with us here on BNC. It's yeah. an honor to have you. Uh, we're going to get into a lot here, but th this case already seeming to have um, ramifications. Uh, just announced yesterday that the DOJ uh, is doing an investigation into the Minneapolis Police Department. Uh, it's not the George Floyd uh, Justice and Policing Act, but uh, Ben, it's it's a good first move. It's a very good first move, Mike. Uh, I've been talking with uh, the Attorney General and the National Bar Association about making sure we have real meaningful reform and that we address these issues in a, a critical manner that tries to get to the crux of the matter. It has been my belief, and as I listened to you, Mike, just a moment ago, it is about equality and equity. And when we're talking about policing in America, the crux of the matter, in my mind, in my belief, has always been, it's about implicit bias. It's about racism mm -hmm. and discrimination. It's not about training or de-escalation or any of that stuff. They can de-escalate just fine when it's our white brothers and sisters. We have seen that play out over and over again, whether it's Kyle Rittenhouse, if he shoots three people, killing two of them, mm -hmm. if it's Dylan Roof shooting the nine mm -hmm. black people in the church in South Carolina, if it's the Parkland High School shooter who uh, shot all of them in high school, they took all of them alive. And oh, we could remember, Sharon, that January 6th, 2021, they de-escalated just fine. But the mm -hmm. only time they seem to not de-escalate and do the most, as my little nephew say, is when it's black people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if, if yeah. I could, I really um, want to pick up on what Ben said. You know, it, what, what Mary Garland did the other day, two days ago, yesterday morning, um, he said, this doesn't begin and it doesn't end with Derek Chauvin. Mm -hmm. The patterns and practice mm -hmm. in the Minneapolis Police Department are deep. Um, there's patterns and practice of racism. There's patterns and practice of excessive use. And, and that's why it's so significant. And we hope that Washington doesn't stop with Minneapolis, that they open up patterns and practice investigation anywhere. Kenosha, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, you all have a lot of work to do, right? And you have a team that you've put together. Um, but Attorney Crump, you know, when I first locked eyes with you, uh, you were standing outside the home of Michael Brown's mother. And you weren't allowing any of the media to, to talk to her. Um, we locked eyes and you did give me a few seconds with her. And I don't know if I ever got to thank you for that. Uh, because I showed up there, my heart was pure. I wanted to talk to this mother in pain. Since then, mm -hmm. you've done so much hand-holding, praying every single day. I wanna talk about your blueprint for getting real change here because to me it's a three-prong approach that I see, right? Part legal, part legislative. And then there's the PR part. There seems to be not mm -hmm. a day that goes by that you're not out there every day pushing and pushing and whether it's social media in front of the cameras it never stops so can you talk about really winning the hearts and minds that's going to be so difficult mm. here and how that blueprint works because you've mastered it and i'm sad that you have so much more work to do i know well you know uh we have to fight in two courts uh first in the court of public opinion and if we can win in that court then maybe, just maybe, we might get to fight in the court of law when it comes to representing marginalized minorities in America. Uh, because we have to remember, Eric Gardner won the court of public opinion, but his family never got their day in court. They never got due process, Sharon. So we have to always remember that it's always about trying to win over the hearts and minds because once you can get people emotional about something then they will act and so that's why you see me so often trying to appeal to the greater society that we love our black children just like you love your white children 
We, yeah. our children, mm -hmm. are have a right to life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness and everything that America has promised its citizens because we too sing America to quote Langston Hughes. And so part of what we often do when we engage President Biden and Vice President Harris, I try to talk about mm -hmm. you all are parents. You say, hey, what did you hope for with your child? What did you dream about your child's future? Well, you understand Dante Wright's mother and father has similar hopes and dreams. And because a police officer engaged in the most excessive use of force, they killed our children. So Attorney Ramanucci and our legal teams, what we try to do is to humanize these victims, these hashtags that they try to look at the worst in them. We try to talk about the humanity in them. And that has been my playbook that I learned from my personal hero and mentor, and that's Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall would take cases that just didn't impact a individual or that family, but he would always take cases that had the greatest impact on the larger society of where we were trying to move forward as a people and as a culture. Mm. Mm. Attorney Ramanucci, wow. you would think that the GOP senators, they have sons, they have daughters they have a heart you think they have a soul uh but what aren't they getting because they can't pass gun control when they see 20 kids being killed in the schoolhouse and for some reason they don't understand that you know people are sick and tired of seeing black and brown people brutalized in the streets by police officers so what are they not getting when it comes to the george floyd policing act there's nothing not to get about the George Floyd police reform act. Absolutely nothing. This should be a slam dunk passage, a, a bipartisan uh, a bill in the Senate. But what they're doing is they're playing politics with their base. All they're doing is going back home and looking at how many votes they're going to get. They're counting votes. And that's what's really disgusting about this, because this is a heart and soul bill. This is one that actually has the opportunity to save needless death. It will save lives. It will make America better in so many different ways, not just in, poli in policing, but community relations, in the trust factor. It would raise all those levels. It would raise the tide for all of us to be better at what we do. And, you know, look, the House of Representatives got it because they have a leader there who understands the issue. The Senate, unfortunately, we're at 50-50. So unless there's a, a you know a, a break in the filibuster, we've got to get mm -hmm. those ten votes, and this should yeah. be a slam dunk bipartisan bill. And, and speaking of bipartisan, it, it appears that Tim Scott, the Republican out of uh, South Carolina, is uh, saying that he could compromise if you are willing to compromise when it comes to uh, immunity for the police officers out there. Is, is there room for compromise when it comes to that at all, uh, Attorney Crump? Well, Mike, um, what they're really doing in many ways is asking you and Sharon and people of color to compromise on the worth of our children. Because mm -hmm. you see, as long as they got qualified immunity, police are 95% of the time totally going to be absolved of any culpability. It's to get out of jail free card. It's right? to get out of jail free card. They kill us with impunity. And so it's hard to compromise on that. I mean, getting rid of no not once, getting rid of the chokehold, uh, all of that is important. The body cam video, the National Registry. But make no mistake about it. The reason why police officers in municipalities escape liability is because of qualified immunity. This mm -hmm. notion that was put forth by the United States Supreme Court in Graham v. Connor and Garner v. Tennessee that says all the police have to do when they kill a person, especially a marginalized person of color, is say three little words. I felt fear. I felt threatened. And then the Supreme Court mm -hmm. said, oh, you can't Monday morning quarterback the police. You can't second guess them. You were not there. Despite all this 
objective evidence, all this video. How many black men got to get shot in the back before we learn that a black man running away from you, white police, poses no threat to you? But yet, they come up with these imaginary fears, these subjective fears to say, oh, we thought that he might have a gun and could turn around and shoot us, even though he only had a cell phone. Yeah. That's what qualified immunity does. <sighs> and that's why we have to fight so hard to get rid of it. Because if we don't, y'all, it won't be right. substantive police reform. It would just be rhetoric. It would be the same old yeah. thing that we keep saying. How many yeah. hashtags, Sharon, since Michael Brown have we dealt with? That is the result of qualified immunity. Yeah. Uh, we're almost out of time, yeah. and, and I know when, when you all scored that record $27 million settlement for the Floyd family, um, it was just, it was appropriate. I know, uh, Attorney uh, Ramanucci, you, you praised the city, but said you'd be doing more, working legally to get more reforms uh, for policing in the community. But Attorney Kremp, I, I want to close with you. There comes that call, another shooting, another unarmed black man or woman killed. What are those initial conversations like from the mother, the aunt, the sister, the brother, Philonis Floyd? What are those initial conversations like, Attorney Crump, so those of us at home can really understand what it's like for these families who, in an instant, are forever changed? You know, it's, it's, it's a humbling that they will seek you out to say, help get us justice. But it's heartbreaking in the sense that they are so desperate because as I'm sitting here, Attorney Ramanuja now preparing to go to the funeral of Dante Wright, mm -hmm. uh, the young man who the white police woman claimed she thought it was mm -hmm. a taser and she shot and killed him. And his aunt Naisha, uh, who had been so passionate, Sharon, talking about, you know, you took from us, you stole from us our flesh and blood. And you tried to tell them from the very instance that we can't promise what will happen in a courtroom, but what we will promise you is that we will get to the truth of what happened. Mm -hmm. And truth is the foundation of getting to justice, Sharon. Mm -hmm. And you you pray with them and you tell them that there's a higher court than this racist, discriminatory court, this legal system we have in America that often marginalizes black people and devalues black people. And you tell them, so we're fighting not just in this court of law, we have to fight in the court of public opinion to define the legacy of your child's existence. We will not let them define it.